This is one of the most popular shoes in the world, but it's probably not a pair that you would expect. This is the Birkenstock Boston, a shoe that first released all the way back in 1979 and somehow in 2024 is one of the most popular shoes available. In fact, during the holidays of last year, this shoe was almost impossible to find anywhere. But the holidays of last year is actually when I got my very first pair of Birkenstock Bostons. My wife got me a pair for Christmas and I absolutely love it. In fact, I love it so much that I decided to do a full on review for this shoe in 2024. Now to be fair, this isn't my first Birkenstock review on the channel. About Three years ago, I did a review on April Fool's Day for the Birkenstock sandals, and somehow that video got like 300,000 views. I don't know where they came from, but it has it. And it's interesting because all of those views didn't come from when the video first released back in like 2021, they came from the holidays of last year. Like I mentioned, the Birkenstock Boston first released back in 1979, and since then it's gone through waves of popularity and unpopularity. In the 80s, Birkenstocks were wildly popular around college campuses, and then they faded into obscurity. In the 90s, the Boston Clog was known as the Outdoor Camper's Comfy Shoe, the kind of shoe that you'd throw on after a long hike. And then in the 2010s, the Birkenstock Bostons became that shoe that you'd wear if you were just trying to be comfy. But somehow, in 2023 and moving into 2024, the Boston Clog's popularity has spiked once again. However, this time, not so much as a functional shoe that's comfortable, but as a comfortable fashion icon. Which is crazy to me, because in my 30 plus years of being on this earth, this was never a shoe that I even considered considered rocking until recently. And I'll be honest, the reason that I got into these shoes was not just because my wife got me a pair for Christmas, but also because all of my coworkers at Apothecary, the sock brand that I helped co-found, were rocking Birkenstocks and loving them. What you got, Oz? Got the Birks with the, with the Apothecary socks. Nice. Yo, custom? Custom, yeah, custom Birks. And I hate to admit this, but my coworkers at Apothecary, and actually also my wife, are a lot more stylish than I am. I know sneakers, but that's about it. So whenever I see any of them rocking something that I don't usually see, I kind of clown them on it for a bit. And then about six months later, I'm like, dang, no, they were right, that's fire. And that seems to be the case once again with the Boston Clog. <sighs> I hate how much I like this shoe. They were right. They were all right. And I hate it. By the way, if you guys haven't checked out my sock brand Apothecary, I definitely recommend it. We make your sneakers favorite socks, and now your Birkenstocks favorite socks. They're incredibly comfortable, they look great with all of the shoes in your collection, whether they're Jordans or Birkenstocks, and we just dropped our Valentine's Day collection, which you can check out by clicking the link in the top of the description below. But now let's talk about why the Birkenstock Boston is such a great all-around shoe. So there are two main versions of the Birkenstock Boston that you can grab that both, from the outside, look exactly the same. There's the standard version, the classic version, and the soft version. Now the difference between these two shoes really is just in the name, it's the comfort level, at least initially. One of the biggest things when it comes to Birkenstocks in general is the fact that you really have to break these shoes in. So the pair of Bostons that I got for Christmas was the first pair of Bostons I ever owned and I did not realize that there was such a long break in time. In fact, when I first put these shoes on, I was like, my wife hates me, this is awful. But after wearing the shoe around the house for about seven days, they broke in and became one of the most comfortable pairs of shoes that I own. And that's because the footbed of the Boston clog is made up of cork and it's actually lined with a suede material. Now the suede sure feels nice on the bottom of your foot, but the cork is very, very stiff, and when you first put it on, it feels like one of those reflexology massages, and it really hurts. At least it did for me. Now, my foot shape isn't anything wild. I have regular width feet. I'm a size nine. I do have high arches, but that's really the only difference between my foot and, I guess, the standard foot. And for me, the initial break-in period of the shoe was, was not the best. But over time wearing this shoe, the cork actually forms to the bottom of your foot and becomes a perfect one-to-one -one fit, which means that the areas of your foot that need support get support, and the areas of your foot that need space get get space. And while the shoe never becomes like pillowy underneath your foot, like an Adidas Boost shoe or a Nike React shoe, it does become incredibly comfortable because it fits your foot perfectly. Now that's what happens on the standard Birkenstock. However, if you don't want to deal with that break in time, they do make the soft Birkenstock, which actually comes in the same styles and colors and sizes and everything like that, but it features a soft footbed. Well, okay, let's be honest. It's not that soft. There is a thin layer of cushion between your foot and the cork, so it does feel good pretty much as soon as you slide your foot into the shoe, but it does still need time to break in. Now I haven't owned the soft variant of the Birkenstock Bostons anywhere close to as long as I've owned the standard version. So my break-in isn't as complete as I guess it is in the other pair. So for me, while these do feel good underfoot, they still don't feel as comfortable as a standard pair, but I'm sure that will change over time. This will probably get as comfortable as the other pair. One thing that I have heard about the soft variant of the shoe, but I can't confirm for myself because I've only owned this pair for about a week at this point. Apparently with the soft version of the shoe, the footbed just doesn't last as long. And that's because the cushion wears down pretty quickly, especially when compared to the standard suede on the regular pair. I'm assuming the reason for that has 
something to do with the cushion itself and the way it's adhered to the, the cork or maybe the suede, I'm not sure. But either way, apparently, according to people online, it doesn't last as long. So keep that in mind, but if you really don't want to deal with the break-in time, then I do recommend getting the soft version over the standard version. But speaking of materials, why don't we talk about some of the materials that you can find on the upper of the Birkenstock Boston. So obviously I have two different versions here, and these tend to be the two most popular colorways or versions of the Birkenstock Boston. You've got the oiled leather, which comes in this really nice tobacco brown color. And then the other popular material used on the upper is this tan suede. Now, of course, there are a ton of different other materials and colorways that you can grab to fit your own personality and style, but these are the two most popular, at least from what I can tell. And what's interesting is because the upper of each one of these shoes is made up of purely that one material with, of course, a bronze accent buckle, you do get a different feel on foot because your foot is right up against whatever material it is that's used on the upper. So for the oiled leather pair, you do get a pretty decent amount of structure because the leather material is pretty thick and actually does hold its shape very well. Now the material is pretty soft, so it's easy to kind of move around. You don't feel constrained, but it's not as soft as the suede. The suede, while obviously looking different, also is a lot softer than the oiled leather and really doesn't have a lot of structure in the upper at all. In fact, during this review, I had to put some paper in the upper just to give it its shape, but when you kind of just have them sitting next to your door, they kind of flatten themselves out, which is fine, but I do find with the oiled leather pair, I can literally slide my feet into them. With a suede pair, I usually have to kind of reach down, pop the top up, and slide my foot in, which isn't that big of a deal, but it is something to keep in mind if you're trying to get out of the door quickly or you want a pair that you could literally just slip on if your hands are full. However, because the suede is so soft, it does have a little bit more give than the leather, so if you want a little bit more give, not a lot, but a little bit, the suede is not a bad way to go. I'm sure for most people, the reason that they'll choose one pair over the other is pure based on looks, and I totally understand that. However, one thing to keep in mind is durability. One of the problems with suede is that if you get it wet, it kind of gets all matted down and it never really regains its, its suedeness. I mean, obviously that depends on how wet it gets and how much you're willing to actually make the suede look like it used to, but suede and water don't really mix. Now, let's be honest, I don't know if walking around in the rain in these shoes is the best idea because they're not a full shoe, so your feet are gonna get wet, but the suede version of the shoes will get a little bit more damaged, I think, than the leather. Now, while water is not the best for leather, it's also not terrible. The water should generally roll off of this shoe, and while it might get a little bit discolored, it's not ever gonna lose that sort of leathery look. Another thing is that suede is a lot more absorbent than leather, so if you stand in a dirty puddle, you're probably gonna have a stain on the shoe that you might not be able to get out. This shoe, you might still have a stain, but it'll be harder to see. And I guess my final point when it comes to durability is the actual durability itself. This oiled leather clog should be able to stand up a little bit better to scuffs and potential tears than the suede one. The suede pair is a lot more fabricy and softer than the leather pair, so it might not be able to handle as many things as this pair will. But at the end of the day, none of that really matters if you don't like the way that the oiled leather pair looks. If you prefer the suede, go with the suede, or of course, vice versa. As I pointed out earlier, you've got this copper buckle with the Birkenstock branding on the lateral side of the shoe and then on the medial side of the shoe you've got another copper accent and then of course you've got the Birkenstock logo pressed into the medial side of the shoe into the leather material of course the more that you wear the shoe the less you'll see the Birkenstock branding but it's a detail that's hard to see anyway because it's on the inside of your foot on top of the footbed you've got some more Birkenstock branding that says Birkenstock made in Germany you've also got the size of the shoe and then of course whether you've got the soft version or the non-soft version one thing to keep in mind though if you happen to be buying a used pair of Birkenstocks which I don't know if people do that because they sort of mold to one person's foot but if you were to do that it might be hard to tell what size you're grabbing because the sizing is literally only on the footbed and the more that the shoe is worn the more it'll wear off and the harder it is to see but also I don't know if I recommend getting used Birkenstocks but you can if you want to they might be hard to find though because these shoes are pretty popular but on that note let's talk about sizing and fit and when it comes to the Birkenstock Boston I am happy to report that this shoe does fit pretty much true to size in addition to coming in standard foot sizes they also come in different widths you've got the medium narrow width and you've also got the standard wide width now I have one of each I think I personally prefer the medium narrow even though I have medium feet because it stays on my foot a little bit better. It could also be the material on this one, but I found that whenever I walk up and downstairs, if I'm really hustling, sometimes they pop off my feet, at least the, the wide version of the shoe. And that's just because I have medium feet, not wide feet. So for me, there's not as much contact between my foot and the shoe as there is on the medium narrow version of the shoe. That being said, the medium wide, or I guess the regular wide, is the standard version of the shoe. So this is a pair that you'll most likely find. The good news is for you, if you're a wide footer, is that the standard version should fit you okay. But if you buy a pair off of Birkenstock's website and find out that they don't fit you, they have a great return policy. So you can just return them, get a size that actually works for you. Also, I should mention, if you want to grab a pair of Birkenstock Bostons in either of these two colorways or really any other colorway, I've made sure to leave links to a bunch of pairs through the YouTube shopping tab on your screen. Also, I've left some apothecary stuff up there, like this pretty much bro cat or apothecary socks. You can grab any of that stuff too if you want. But again, if you are looking to grab a pair of Birkenstock Bostons, I would recommend going true to size. But now let's talk about pricing. And unfortunately, the Birkenstock Boston is not the cheapest pair of clogs in the world. In fact, they're one of the more expensive pairs 
uh, because they are priced between $145 and $160. Now I will say for that price, you are getting an incredibly high quality pair of clogs. The materials used on this shoe are honestly some of the best you can find on footwear in that price range. The suede looks incredible and feels incredible. The oiled leather looks and feels incredible as well. The cork footbed feels really good underfoot once you've broken it in. The suede even used on the footbed is really solid. It's an all around really high quality shoe. Of course, rounding off the bottom of the shoe, you've got an EVA outsole, which also lasts a pretty long time as well. So all around, you're getting an incredibly high quality shoe for 145 to 160 bucks. Now to be fair, you could go out to the store and buy a pair of shoes that actually covers your entire feet, like a pair of Adidas or Jordans or something like that. But if you're going for this style and a really high quality pair of clogs, you can't really go wrong with the Birkenstock Boston. Will the Birkenstock Bostons be as popular as they are now forever? Definitely not. In fact, I'm sure in the next five to 10 years, these shoes will go back to being uncool. But the nice thing about grabbing these shoes is although they're trendy right now, you are getting an incredibly high quality pair of shoes that are very comfortable underfoot and should last you a really long time. So even if you're buying these shoes just to be trendy, honestly, you could spend your money in worse ways and these will probably last you long enough for them to become cool again which is kind of crazy. You can't say that for every pair of Jordans, especially if you plan to wear them as much as I've worn my Birkenstocks. But hey, that pretty much wraps up the review for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Birkenstock Bostons in the comment section down below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and I will see you all in the next one.